I am ready to start. We have come today to the last module. What we have done in the previous five modules is uh, take a look at the general CFD approach for the solution of Navier-Stokes equations and other related equations in uh, flows of uh, uh, very simple geometries. Most practical problems are uh, much uh, more difficult uh, than that. And in the last module, we are going to look at uh, some issues in practical problems. And specifically, we will be looking at uh, two issues. In part A, we will be looking at how to deal with uh, irregular geometry. And in part B, we will be looking at how to deal with turbulent flows. Turbulent flows are quite common and laminar flows are much more uh, rare. And uh, we have to have a, a different formulation for turbulence to account for the very strong effect of turbulence on flow and flow related phenomena like heat transfer and mass transfer reaction rate. And how we tackle that is what we are going to discuss in the second part of this particular module. But in the first module, we will be looking at uh, uh, how to deal with irregular geometry or complex geometry that cannot be fit in standard uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate system. We have seen right in the beginning an example of a typical industrial geometry and uh, this is the case of uh, uh, flow coming out of uh, a furnace and it comes and it goes through lots of heat exchangers and then finally through some special equipment like uh, electrostatic precipitators which will capture the particulates in it and then it will eventually be going into uh, a stack. In a typical power plant, location of these things uh, is dictated not by fluid mechanics consideration, but by how to optimize the usage of the available space within the power plant. So we have very irregular flow shape flows uh, ducting like this and all of this is typically very large. So there will be civilian, uh, civil infrastructure to support these and then there will be other things to make sure that safety is uh, uh, assured for the personnel working in this. And we should also have uh, spaces for people to work in. So all those kind of practical issues are there. And those issues will actually govern the layout of the fluid flow ducting. And we as engineers, fluid flow engineers will have to take account of those and design our fluid flow equipment to do the required performance uh, to to deliver the performance that is required of this. So in such case, we cannot deal with uh, uh, simple Cartesian coordinates to describe, for example, how the flow is going through this and then how it splits into here and how it splits goes into this and how it goes and exchanges heat in this heat exchanger, which is typically fairly uh, complicated in shape and operation. And then it comes back, merges and then it splits, comes here splits into two and then it goes into these further kind of splits. So all these things are fluid mechanics things and uh, we have to make this happen. We have to design all this uh, ducting in such a way that this happens. So when you are dealing with that, you need to know what kind of velocity profiles, what kind of pressure drops and what kind of pressure drops should be induced, what kind of flow resistances to, uh, are to be created inside these passages in such a way that the required amount of flow will be going through this track and uh, the some other part will be going through this. All those uh, issues we have to tackle and in order to do that, we need to be able to get uh, uh, a flow field as the flow takes goes through this, uh, this kind of ducting. So typically these kind of irregular geometries are uh, uh, commonly encountered in uh, industrial practice. We have two types of approaches for dealing with this flow through irregular geometries. And these are, uh, we can uh, clearly see that in a case where, uh, for example, in the first case which is shown here, we have a quadrilateral geometry which is not like a rectangle. If it is rectangle, we can put uh, uh, an XY coordinate system, uh, Cartesian coordinate system. But here, if you want to cut this into tiles, you cut them in, in this parallel way and not 
uh, like that stepped kind of thing that may we may get with uh, using Cartesian coordinates here. And then uh, so in a case like this you would have to deal you have to abandon trying to represent the geometry in a simple Cartesian coordinate system and you have to have some specialized uh, uh, way of representing the geometries, geometrical boundaries these four walls along lines of constant coordinate uh, uh, planes. Okay. So, for that we use what is known as body fitted grid where for example, the grid lines curve in order to fit uh, the available shape. This is this here these lines are parallel horizontal, but these lines are inclined to uh, fit with this and here we have these grid lines are curving like this in order to account for this curvature here okay. and these are uh, curving like this and these are curving like this and here you have a, a, a duct with a throat section and an obstruction here. Again the grid lines here are like in Cartesian coordinate system, but as you come into this here the bending okay, they are bending so as to accommodate the shape and this particular boundary actually this uh, boundary line takes uh, the shape of the boundary here. So, if you say that this is uh, n j line, n j line is actually one of the boundary points here and similarly here you have this one going through like this and then taking a bend and then comes out like this and this is known as a body fitted uh, grid and this is a still uh, a structured grid in the sense that the grid nodes here are located along intersection of constant horizontal lines and constant uh, vertical lines here and here these are uh, along constant coordinate lines which are curvy linear which are not linear but uh, uh, which will be taking shape of the of curves okay so this is one particular approach to dealing with complex geometry that may be there another approach is not to have this uh, 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 structured grid where the grid points are along uh, lines of constant uh, uh, intersection of this constant grid lines but to have these kind of triangular uh, uh, elements of different shapes which are made in such a way as to have the boundary line being one of the se segments of the in this particular case the triangular uh, cell okay so even something like this can be made into segmented linear segments each of which forms the base of one triangle triangular element and uh, then you can create a network like this and here we have close to this curved uh, surface here we have triangular elements as you come into the interior you have rectangular elements. So, all these are unstructured grid where the points where you evaluate the uh, uh, variables are not at the intersection of lines of constant coordinate uh, 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 lines okay, uh, at points of constant intersection of these uh, lines. So, the, these two are two different approaches they have their advantages and they have their disadvantages. So, one of the disadvantages with uh, the body fitted grid is when you look at the local grid refinement possibility. For example, you have this as the grid for this, you have done a flow computation and you found that flow around this is of interest to you and you would like to resolve this well and uh, when you say you want to have resolved uh, uh, a well resolved flow, you are looking at accuracy in computation and we know that accuracy depends on the grid spacing. So, you would like to have fine grid spacing, small grid spacing here and as you go away from the wall and the domain of interest maybe you can have large grid spacing. So, you are looking at possibility of local grid refinement and if you want to do that you can make smaller cells here and uh, there is smaller grid here, smaller cells here, but none here. But since the grid nodes in a body fitted structured grid are always at intersection of these coordinate lines if you want to fit if you want to make small cells here so that means that the spacing between the coordinate lines here must be small and this has to be taken all the way out to this there is a small mistake here it has to go all the way up to this and uh, so even though you you are getting your small grid cells here 
you are also getting small grid cells here at least in one direction and similarly here you have small cells here and here you do not have uh, small cells. So, you can reduce the number of grid points that are uh, used to describe this flow geometry whereas here you do not have that luxury this thing is going all the way up to this. Okay. So, in that sense local grid, grid refinement is done more efficiently with an unstructured grid more efficiently in the sense that you use fewer number of points to refine a local grid whereas that kind of possibility is not there with uh, largely it is not there with the uh, body fit grid. There is also an advantage uh, for the body fit grids in the sense that it is very much like uh, our uh, finite difference method and uh, you we have already seen the finite difference method and finite volume method in the very first module when we are dealing with flow in a uh, through a rectangular duct and flow through a triangular duct and we saw that doing the problem with uh, uh, finite difference method was fairly easy compared to doing it with the finite volume method where we had to do all kinds of uh, uh, cells and then the orientations and the fluxes all that uh, difficulty had to be done. So, there is ease of programming that is possible with body fitted grid and uh, you can make use of the simple uh, much simpler finite uh, difference methods with this and the resulting equations like a phi equal to b will have diagonal structure uh, that is expected with this and we have seen a number of efficient methods which can be used for the solution of uh, ax equal to b type of equations with a diagonal structure all those things can be applied here but only some of them can be applied for a unstructured grid here okay so they, these are some kind of advantages and uh, another advantage with the body fit grid is that when you have flow going in essentially in the parallel to the wall like here or here well away from this then changes are taking place only in the x direction and y direction there is uh, only for example velocity profile is changing. Ideally you do not need to have a very fine grid in the x direction because there is hardly any change between this point and this point. So, you can have elongated cells in the body fitted grid here whereas here it is not possible because you have a three dimensional shape here. So, it is not possible to have highly elongated triangles to represent this. So, when you have essentially 1D flow or essentially 2D flow you can make better use of uh, uh, the elongation capabilities in the body fit rate grid rather than uh, in the uh, unstructured grid. If you make highly skewed triangle then uh, you are going to have introduced lot of numerical errors. So, that is one of the disadvantages of the unstructured grid formulation. Um, so, th there are certain reasons for it. but there are so many practical advantages grid generation is much simpler with this as uh, we will see uh, uh, than with this which makes uh, uh, body fitted uh, the unstructured grid as the standard default uh, approach to be used for flows in irregular geometries. Okay. So, before we look at the finite volume method a formulation of the finite volume method for unstructured meshes we would like to just take a, a look at how we would solve the fluid flow equations in the case of a body fitted grid because there, there are some uh, changes that are required and that we will uh, just uh, discuss uh, briefly uh, without trying to fully understand it. So, the approach of the body fitted grid okay, there is uh, um, repetition of the approach here is that you have a physical plane in which you have a, this kind of odd shaped computational domain it is not rectangular you have this curved side walls uh, like this and uh, you would like your grid here to respond to these things. So, that it curves here like this and it is curving here like this and here it is curving in the opposite way. So, these are uh, curvilinear coordinate lines which are uh, making this into uh, a number of rectangular tiles not rectangular tiles, but quadrilateral tiles and the intersection of lines of this line and this line 
will locate this particular point. So, in the physics, so we distinguish between a physical plane, which is the actual uh, real uh, geometry that we see, and a computational plane. In a real, in the physical plane, we have the complex shape that is uh, associated with the actual geometry. This is transformed into a, in the computational plane into a simple rectangle here. And in this rectangle, we choose to have this line which is curvilinear in, in uh, here to be just vertical. And this line which is uh, curving up like this and then curving, changing direction here is actually just a straight line like this. So, the idea is to transform these grid lines from these uh, horizontal and vertical lines in the computational plane into this curvilinear lines which will describe the uh, shape uh, of the domain properly. So, this transformation is part of the grid generation and that is done using a number of methods. Uh, so, uh, we do not have time uh, definitely in this course to go into that. Uh, but we have the that kind of grid generation. So, we generate a body fitted grid using a number of methods that are available to do. And, uh, but we, so that we convert the problem for example, of temperature uh, given by this uh, uh, two dimensional uh, steady state heat conduction problem, where we want to know T of x y, okay, T x y at each of these grid points here. So, for this instead of solving this equation in the physical plane, we transform everything into the computational plane, where we have uniform grid delta x and delta y and uh, all that is uh, uh, well and good and you have uniform spacing and uh, uh, constant coordinate lines. So, we transform this equation into computational plane and then there we do the discretization. So, if the domain in the x y plane is described by uh, uh, in the physical plane by uh, x and y boundaries here, in the computational plane the corresponding x uh, direction is indicated as psi uh, and the y is indicated for example, as eta. So, this is the eta direction and this is the xi direction and this side a b corresponds to a prime b prime and this boundary b c corresponds to b prime c prime and c d here to c prime d prime and d a here to d prime a prime and each of these interior uh, curved lines are like this and we would like to solve everything here. We would like to uh, write finite difference approximations here because these are very easy things to do. Okay, because you have constant grid spacing, whereas here you have non-uniform grid spacing. And if you want to represent uh, the gradients at the boundaries, then we have difficulty here because these lines are not uh, straight. So, in in that sense, we would like to work in the computational domain where everything is very neat and tidy. So, for that, we have to express now this t of x y in terms of t of psi eta. So, we have to go through the, uh, the rules of transformation of derivatives and all that. Uh, it can be done, it can be done by everybody, but it takes time to do it. So, this equation which has only dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square equal to s gets transformed into this equation here, where this subscript indicates derivative. So, this is uh, t psi psi means dou square t by dou psi square and this is dou square t by dou eta square, this is dou square t by dou psi dou eta and this is dou t by dou psi and this is dou t by dou eta. And uh, here psi x square is dou psi by dou x whole square, dou psi by dou y whole square and uh, similarly eta is here, here dou psi by dou x and dou eta by dou x and uh, all these things can be derived. These are plain rules of uh, uh, transformation and, uh, uh, but what we say is that, by, so instead of solving this simple equation in this complex geometry, we choose to solve this rather more difficult equation in this simple geometry. And so, here we have dou square t by dou psi square. So, we can use central differencing for this and here you have uh, i comma j and this i comma j in the computational plane 
corresponds to the similar i comma j in this. So, if you want to know the value here, then you find out out here and how do you find it out? You write finite difference approximation for this derivative, this derivative, this derivative and convert all of this into an equation like a t equal to b that will have some diagonal structure. You can use gauss seidel method or uh, whatever method you would like and then solve this a t equal to b in this domain by discretizing this transformed equation and you get tau uh, t i j in the computational plane and you know for every point here there is a corresponding point in the physical, physical plane which you know a priori because you chose to have this body fitted grid you decide on how to do this and so you know the variable value at t at this point this point this point and so on. So, you get T i j not by solving the original equation you get T i j by solving at the transformed equation in the computational plane using finite difference techniques. Okay. So, this is the approach of body fit grid way of dealing with complicated geometry this is developed in uh, uh, in the mid 80s and it became uh, 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 very instantly uh, successful. But uh, over a period of the next 10 years it got slowly replaced by, uh, by the unstructured grid approach uh, in which we make use of the finite volume method for the discretization. So, in the rest of the uh, uh, 4 lectures or so for this module, this part of the module we will be looking at how we can uh, solve a similar kind of problem where we have this kind of uh, uh, irregular geometry not using the body fitted grid approach, but using the unstructured grid approach. And in this lecture we will just try to contrast this approach of the body fitted grid with the approach of the fi uh, finite volume method in the unstructured grid and uh, uh, we will work out the full details in the next lecture. So, this is just to look at the formulation of the problem in the finite volume method we have a general form of the conservation equation like this dou by dou t of rho phi plus dou by dou x j of rho u j phi plus dou by dou x j of gamma phi the diffusivity of phi dou phi by dou x j plus s phi. So, for different values of phi this can be the uh, mass balance equation, x momentum balance, y momentum balance, species conservation, energy conservation and so on we have seen that if you want to do the finite volume method first thing is that we write this equation in vectorial form and then we put it. So, this becomes dou rho phi by dou t um, plus del dot uh, uh, rho u phi where u is the vector here phi is the scalar and del dot sigma phi gradient of phi plus uh, this and these two this is the advective flux and this is the diffusive flux. So, we club these two in the form of a flux here and write this expression as dou by dou t of rho phi plus del dot f where f is the flux which is a convective plus, di plus diffusive flux convective flux is rho u phi and diffusive flux is minus del dot uh, gamma phi gradient phi ok there is a, a small mistake in notation from phi here and uh, uh, phi here. Uh, so, once you have this equation you integrate it over a control volume. So, you write this as integral of control volume over control volume of dou by dou t of rho phi dv plus integral of control volume of del dot f times dv equal to integral of this s phi dv. Okay. So, we assume that since we have divided the whole control volume into very small cells within the cell the value of phi is constant. Okay. So, we have essentially discretized it and then we say that this term can be written as dou by dou t of rho phi times volume of cell plus we make uh, use of the Gauss divergence theorem to convert this integral over a closed control volume of the divergence of del dot phi here into f dot d s and uh, uh, then we can uh, uh, write it like this and this part is discretized okay, evaluated separately 
over each uh, surface uh, which uh, covers this, this cell here. So, this is the discretized form and now the problem of solving this equation, this equation or this equation becomes evaluation of this term and evaluation of the flux. So, that means that how we determine the uh, convective flux and how we determine this and then multiplying taking the dot product with the surface of each bounding surface and then you sum over all the faces and then you have the source term evaluated and you multiply the volume of the cell. So, we need to know the volume of the cell and we need to know all the surfaces which envelop the, the cell and we need to know their direction vectors because we are taking a di uh, dot product and we need to be able to evaluate the fluxes. If we do this, then we can uh, use this equation to develop an algebraic equation for the value of phi in that particular cell. And we do that for all the cells to come up with uh, a set of algebraic equations. And then we can use gauss seidel method for example. So, in the finite volume method, we are using only the governing equation without any transformation. We are solving, we are doing all these things in the physical plane where there is no separate computational plane. Whereas, in the body fitted uh, grid approach, we are doing all the discretization and all those things in the transformed uh, uh, of the transformed equation in the computational plane and we are sending back the solution at the grid points of the variable back to the physical plane. So, these are uh, two different approaches. We will not go much more uh, into the body fitted grid approach, but from the uh, next lecture onwards, we will be looking at uh, uh, this part and how we can generalize it and how we can evaluate it for a general uh, uh, finite volume cell. And uh, then we will also look at uh, how to break up the domain of irregular shape into these cells. So, the uh, uh, grid generation essentially grid generation finite volume methods and we will put together the whole uh, set of formulation that can be used uh, for finite volume uh, method for an irregular shape. We do all these things in 2D because that is the uh, simplest thing that we can readily understand. 1D we can do, but it is really not, uh, it does not offer much scope for complexity and we cannot illustrate the uh, complexity part of it. So, we will do it in 2D. Okay. So, next uh, lecture we will start with this and then take it further. Thank you.